So to recap my last video about extracting grooves from drum loops, I want to show you what else you can do because we had some some ideas over the weekend by XISO and others on my channel um, how to use this even better. So um, for instance, we have your drum loop, which is the think break. I pitched it up a bit for copyright reasons and we want to extract the groove from that. So instead of using a note grid like in my last example this time we use the transient control and transient control basically detects transients better than just the envelope follower and also the transient control uh, features here this sidechain inputs we can grab directly the audio here uh, from the first track so think about the funky drummer which is the drum loop so we grab that and now we have here audio track, which is not correct. We want to have an instrument track still because we just want to use this not as an audio effect. We want to use it as an um, detection, transient detection uh, device. So now we get the audio in here from the first track. We can even mute the first track and we still get here all the transients and we can dial down here the timing even more because we just want, you know, uh, a gate signal to that we know that we have a transient there so inside fx box here we can use the node grid um, this one so now we have the audio going through into this here and only analyzing so there's no audio happening on the second track it's just analyzing the first track and giving us here basically the attack uh, timing and we go into the FX grid here, or node, node grid, and use a value slider or knob. And we can modulate this with the attack modulator here, right? So now we have a signal inside the grid, uh, which is exactly what we are detecting here with transient control on the track one, on the drum loop. And we can this then, of course, convert into a gate signal pretty easily with this one here you can see we have all the small little uh, gate signals happening here we can go down into this is 31 31.6 so we can go down to 30 seconds don't want that um so yeah we have a nice clock signal here which is Pretty uneven, but it's a organic drum loop. Um, and then we use a clock quantizer, like in my last example. And we use this as a clock, clock source. And then we can pass through here our original, or maybe move this down here. So you can see it better. So this, the drum loop is our clock source and it's uh, quantizing basically the notes we are putting in here into the node grid. So now that we have this, we can create inside here our instrument, which is XO. Go for a kick drum, snare drum, I had maybe percussion thing, paint in a drum loop. Oh yeah, another thing we can do is that we actually disable the clock quantizer here with the select um, and use a play thing here. So every time, every time we hit play or on the transport here, uh, we get the quantize signal and when it stops, um, then we use the original signal so we can select here right and can preview what we are what we are doing because when it's stop there's no quantizing signal no quantize signal no groove source and um, on the second track there's you know no gate signal passing through the node grid so we need here 
um, the small little select box. So we are selecting between the stop state and the play state of the transport. The next trick is doing basically the same, but much more complicated. And a lot of people actually like to do simple things more compli in a more complicated way, because why not, right? So instead of using the transit control here with the node grid inside of it, uh, we just drag here the XO out and just um, maybe, yeah, we can still use that, I think. We can still use this here. So we use this inside here. So what we do is we create a chain device here just to wrap everything into a container. Call this detector. Inside the detector, we use an audio receiver to get the audio from the first track here. So three. So now we have here the audio signal just from above. Inside here, we filter into three bands. So we have low, mid and top band and we put of course a transient control into each of these devices here and we also disable here the sidechain input we don't because we don't need it we get the signal in here from from the audio receiver which grabs the audio from top then we have a node grid inside here okay so now we can just put this here i hate this in here and in here so we have now a transient control into each box and each transient control has a node grid um, getting um, the attacks from each band right so now we can close this here and now we have the problem that all the nodes coming from the piano roll here playing our pattern goes right through the detector uh, or pass through without going through the node grid. Or actually, it, it goes into the node grid, but it doesn't come out here of the audio boxes. So we have to do this manually by using an, a node receiver. And grab here basically what's inside the low box and the mid box and the high box. So we go here, XO, detector, chains, chain, multi band FX3, low transient control fx node grid so this is the first node from or this is the detector signal basically from the low band we have to do this here again and here we need to disable mute because we want to let these nodes pass through this, this device here so we have to disable the mute here and here we get the mid signal so detector chains chains multiband fx uh, mid transient control fx node grid done Next one, XO, detector chains, chain, multi-band FX, high transient control FX, node grid. So now we basically grab here from each band, each generated or synchronized signal for each band from the, from the groove source here on top. So this should be working. So what we can do now is that these node receivers here are firing basically on all yeah on all nodes at the same time so we can also limit these nodes to a specific range so we want to only let's say synchronize c c1 c c sharp one and maybe d1 only to the signal which is analyzed in the low box right so something like this so we can do this by um, just using here inside these boxes. So this is the low signal. We can call this low. This is mid. And this is high. Inside the box here, we use an channel filter. Or not channel filter, a node, node filter. Of course, we have to set manually here all the filters all the time um, node filter there it is 
And you can say we only want to have the yeah, everything from C1 to C C sharp one or C sharp two, C sharp one, this one. So something like this, and then you can limit this here to different ranges. C1 to I don't know. I think the hi-hats are E1 already. Oh. Yeah, the movement, when you move your certain device inside a chain and it, it moves the offset of the viewpoint, it's completely messing me up sometimes. Um, if I put this in here. What is the E1 to... F maybe something like this. So now the, the kick drum is synchronized to the low band, the, the snare is synchronized to the mid band and the hi-hats are synchronized to the top band. Perfect. Can I exchange the drum loops? So it's perfectly. It's probably not perfect, but you you get the idea how this works. You can make this as complicated as you want. You can go down to single bands. Maybe also instead using the FX three. You can use the peel, um, the peel filter. We can also use spectral filtering here and go to special bands and just use this as a clock signal. Um, so the the message here is um, it's not like an out of the box experience like in Ableton Live where you just right click and synchronize or whatever you do there. Um, here you can basically analyze the signal in a way you want and route the signal to anything you want. So you can synchronize anything to anything. So at the end of this video, I want to show you um, a small, small little solution for when you have longer gate signals as an input. For instance, here we still use the funky drama or the think break as a source for the clock and we have here a bass line which kind of has longer notes than just these short drums and drum hits here so you have kind of this bass sound and when you use our detector thing here obviously all these notes become pretty short so the problem here is that the clock quantizer doesn't preserve the gate length. Um, we have the clock quantizer and it synchronizes perfectly the note ons, but it also puts in the note offs from the clock quantizer or from the, from the clock signal. So you can see we have pretty short clock signal here and the clock signal every time it switches off switches also the note length off from the original signal. So we have to kind of preserve the original gate length of our note clip here right so we only want to quantize the note ons every time here and the note offs are basically unquantized by the original so i want to show you a small solution to this and how i did this in my quantized input preset uh, before we got all these quantizers and um, i did this by using a latch and here we go with the clock quantizer only in the one input here in the one check, which means the clock quantizer only decides when to switch on a note. And when we switch off, this is decided by the original signal and we need a comparison here for that. 
I don't know if, if it's the right method, but this is how I did it. Um, so every time this is zero or this original signal is zero, which means we switch just a note off, then we get the signal and you can see here we play no notes. So it's, uh, it's a yes. And then we need a repeater. So we need to repeat this multiple times, maybe every five milliseconds to switch this off. So every time the clock quantizer wants to switch something on, this gets immediately deleted by the gate repeater here when the original node is off. So node offs are decided by our uh, baseline clip and node ons are quantized to what we get from the drum loop. Um, so this should work. And now we have a preserved gate length. And now I can show you here that it also works with um, maybe note repeats. To get me some repeats here, switch this off so this sounds, uh, sounds without. And with the quantizer synchronized to the drum loop, Kind of with the repeaters here, with the note repeats and this uh, quantizing or synchronizing or clock quantizing method to the drum loop, we get a nice rhythms for the bass line from the original drum loop, which is a nice, nice thing to do. Um, we can also delay here the signal a bit with the note delay by maybe two, two beats, which just offsets the bass line a bit. So we have the same groove, but it's just two beats offset. So you can kind of um, get creative with this one to have nice little grooves in your bass line from your drum loop. 